Let's talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, talk about Stranger Things. Michelle <clears throat> Yao. So I was going to tell you this. Okay, so um, remember we went and saw Magnificent Warriors? Yes. Now do you get why they played that? Now I kind of get it. Yeah. Like, it's cut fast exactly in that style. Yeah. I, it, there's. I'm surprised they didn't have the warning that you could have, like, you can stroke out during that movie, especially when they're really doing Yeah, like, similar to what you're doing right there. I was concerned that this is like everything everywhere all at once. For they a- did that. And when, when they blasted through like all like, so the premise for you out there is just like they, this, her husband f- from another dimension from the alpha universe found a way to contact other universes. And then they really got into multiverse stuff. And it was really like a fantastical movie and shout out to the return of short round data. What, how do you say his name? I don't want to butcher his name. Um. Uh, yeah. Let's not butcher it. Yeah. But he, real quick, though, we're gonna get into spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, we got spoilers. Yeah, we're gonna start to get into spoilers. But can you, like you said, I was like, how could you spoil this movie even if you wanted to? Like, how tough would that be? I don't even know. Um. K- so you, Kei Hui Kwan. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. But dude, it was just fantastic that it was just you heard short round as an adult. Like you heard Dave, like he had, he sounded just like that, but now he had like the deeper voice, but he did a great job. He did a really good job because he had a jump. Well, I guess I don't want to get ahead of myself. The premise is we talked about that. So you got to see different versions of the main characters in different universes. And one of them, which was the daughter in this universe, basically became like Scarlet Witch, she was like a nexus being where she somehow her brain connected to all the versions of herself across all universes. And it happened to be her daughter. And then it was her on her to stop this being who is your daughter in this dimension. But he just so can you imagine like having a kid and the main villain is going to be your kid because it's connected to all the versions of it of your kid. And the one that's in control is like a mastermind villain, which it was a lot. But so when I saw this movie, though, as I was watching it, the first thing I thought was this is what the Matrix Resurrections should have been. Yeah, this was this was like a multiverse movie that used that concept in a new kind of a way. Um, I just I, I know this was considered like made for a U.S. audience, but you can tell this had. This was more bold than anything people would make in What's the like US. What's like an indie studio? Well, I guess A24, A24 is an indie yeah. studio. I don't know if you can call a $25 million movie indie, but I guess that's what they do. They make these uh, indie. lower, lower you know risk there. movies. You call him Dr. Jones, doll. Fuck. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. But... Yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess it is considered indie just because if you didn't spend $100 million in, in the backing of a giant studio or a big studio that's not named Disney or and a multiverse movie, yeah, that I guess that would be kind of indie. But it was bold. It was really bold, but the performances were great because they had to be different versions of themselves. Like in one universe, she was the opera singer. And I talked about this with you. There's people in real life, IRL right now, that you can read about that are doing what's kind of being done in this film. What's that? It's called quantum tunneling, I believe. Quantum tunneling? Where basically it's a way that you t- you mentally build a tunnel to another version of yourself that has like a skill. So like if you want to learn to pay, play the piano, if you want to learn to speak Spanish properly... <laughs> You can tunnel to another version of yourself that can, and the hive mind, because their their theory is the hive mind with quantum entanglement, like your brain is connected to all versions of yourself, right? Because you make a choice, you hit the fork in the road. If you say no, you go this way. You say yes, you go this way, right? It's uh, choose your own adventure. But you never lose that connection between those two minds. So their theory is like you're able to learn these skills that if you would have took another path like so in the film michelle yao 
she said no to uh, the Ki Huyang Kwan character, and then she became a famous martial artist in films, so she was able to call that power and learn martial arts. And there's people that really do this, and that kind of that's blows That's a real mind. thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. I'm, I'm going to just do a quick search, make sure I'm not speaking. It's called Kwan Dumb Tunneling. So, uh, I mean, I think overall, if, if I have like a regular just review of the movie, just to get that out of the way, it's pretty entertaining. I feel like, Very it's, entertaining. I feel like it's a little long to me. It's about two and a half hours. I don't know. That's a bit long for yeah. uh, But I mean, every like uh, I think the part that just cracked me up was the rocks. Oh, yeah. Let's just be rocks. Let's be rocks in this universe. That was great. Wait, I don't know if it's that or Hot Dog Finger. Hot Dog Finger Hot Dog Fingers really was great. That kind of came out of nowhere, too. A world, imagine a world where everyone has hot dog fingers. Hot dog. (laughs) It was very random, and I enjoyed that randomness. Because obviously you can go for the big ones like, I'm an opera singer. I'm a, a famous martial artist. No, in this one, you're just a lesbian with hot dog fingers. Or you're a rock. Yeah. How about that world instead? Yeah, and they're like, let's just be rocks. And then they figured out how to make the rocks move. I think that was yeah. really cool. But yeah, no, it was very, very enjoyable. And you know, they had the googly eyes gimmick. Um, the googly did you, eyes did you see gimmick. it at Alamo? Yes. Did, you, did they have googly eyes at Alamo? Like on the stuff? Yeah, like they just, they had on the counter, you could grab googly eyes. On oh, no, I did not see that. No, I did not. Dang it. I, well, I wasn't looking either. Yeah. So, ah, man, I should have went. No, I think it's that one. The the Well, I mean, not to cut a promo, but the I think the Alamo on South Lamar is the best one, and it's still the, the one that tries to hang true to the original principles. Yeah. So they always do something for the big movies. They have some kind of gimmick. It always feels different when I go to this that one with you versus when I go to the one that's up north. It's like the only one that holds true to the original feeling, and it tries to. When I saw Licorice Pizza, they had a Licorice Pizza pinball machine there. Oh, wow, just in the yeah. lobby. See, and so does, uh, what's his name, Tim Lee? Does he still own that one? Doesn't he still I mean, own I don't, one? I, I mean, I don't know. He's definitely a, a big part of it. I'm not sure how it's all set up. I think he might own the the ones in Austin. Oh, okay. And yeah, which, and it's a shame that the, the best one did go go night-night. Let me just read the lead. There. I, I'm going to try to properly read the, the premise Let's see. It's actually all right. Let's let's well before I read the premise, let me read the stats here. So, it is ninety-seven percent tomato meter, ninety-four percent audience score. That's high. That's really really high, right? I mean, it's getting good reviews. It's getting great reviews. All right, sorry. I know you got the uh, Evelyn Wong. Is a Chinese American woman who runs a struggling laundromat with her husband, Waymond. Tensions in the household are high due to the laundromat being audited by the IRS after Evelyn incorrectly files her taxes. Additionally, Waymond is trying to give divorce papers to Evelyn. Evelyn's father, Gong Gong. Shout out to Gong Gong. What up, Gong Gong? Yeah. That was great to see our, our from. Big Trouble in Little China, right? Victor Wong. He's been Victor a lot Victor Wong, stuff. yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, I think that was it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because the rest we really start getting into big spoilers. So when I saw this movie, I immediately knew that this was right up your alley. Oh, man. Um, I it was. It. it was. I'm ready you know, to see it's, it. It's definitely like um, unique and I guess somewhat you call it experimental, whatever. But the logic of this movie... And the things that it was doing, like what what did it make you think about? The stuff that I think about every day of I, just yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. So what did this what did this provoke in your mind? Because I mean you think this is this is like a metaverse movie now that we're so beyond the matrix and beyond uh Marvel, beyond Endgame, all these things, and now like these smaller indie movies are doing these multiverse you know kind of gimmicks yeah and here's our yeah and here's the hot take and i think you i think you i think you called it where what could have made you know and i still love matrix resurrections i'm one of the few but if the concepts around the matrix was kindergarten everything everywhere all at once was eighth grade like it, it took it to a whole nother level 
like first that introduced that it is possible that you could be living in a simulation but now we're talking about but what if it's multiple simulations and what if it's simulations where you can learn to make contact with people in other simulations and then what if somebody took advantage of that and then you had to find a way to connect a hive mind of yourself across simulations to basically defend the multiverse as we know it like simulation theory is a thing but there's also multiple simulations going multiple on at the thing. same time yeah. and you can communicate with those other simulations yeah that's what that's exactly where i took it i was like okay now now i get it but yeah i i highly recommend going to see this and if and if you want to take some kind of supplement beforehand go ahead Go 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 on a ride. There's plenty of time to to to, to let that you know, ride that out between t- trailers and the movie. You're gonna be in there for a good two hours and yeah. forty five minutes or so. The, the setup was, and I guess if you the the director and you you would have cut it. The, there was a lot of thickness in the beginning. You probably could have cut right. I don't know because it felt long to me. All right, and I'm just as a shoot. You know, I went to the 10:30 Alamo show, and by like beer number three, I was kind of like okay. <laughs> I'm ready because the thing is, it's like, and also the thing about this movie is, it's got a weird pacing that is unfamiliar. It's very strange pacing, right? Because you, you, you know, even if you, you, you know, you say you're not like classically movie trained, but you watch a movie and you get you're familiar with the pacing, so you know what's going to happen, or you know, here's when things are about to pick up. Yeah, and the movie is divided into chapters, kind of like the way Quentin Tarantino does, and when it gets to chapter th- chapter one and two are like an hour or so each and then you get to chapter three and it's like five minutes yeah that's a shoot so sorry if you haven't seen it but it's weird that was very yeah that one threw me because there was like part one everything part two everywhere and then part three here's it all at once but the all at once was kind of like an epilogue and it happened like really quick but it's funny den of nerds was talking about that this morning shout out i'm a huge fan i watch and they were talking about trying to explain pacing because when you see moon knight He's complaining that episode three had some strange pacing. And they were like, why are you always talking about pacing? What is pacing even? Like, and as a filmmaker, like, what would you explain pacing? And the way I think about it, pacing is, I think Greece is, would we be like, because you're like, okay, we're talking about Greece when it comes to pacing. Well, is this the scene when you're stranded at the drive-in or you're going to build up to, you know, the big thing that happens at the dance and then the big climactic event is the graduation like so greece i feel like the 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 markers in the sand on where you need to hit you know those landmarks of just like to keep your pace going in the right direction or like right there here's the uh updated version of description of what pacing is does the movie keep you from looking at your phone Oh yeah, that's big. Are you? How often are you checking your phone in the movie? If you're checking it a, quite a bit, the pacing's probably uh, not good. You're right. Right. Yeah, the, the the distracted eyes. That's a good way to do it. Like how often that you're looking at your phone to see. This movie's cut so fast. There's no chance for you to look at your phone. No. no. Even if you watch this at home, I guarantee you're going to be like, because you can't really turn away for a second. No. No, there's no, like, if you, can you imagine, like, walking in halfway, like, the people who, like, I call those people lunatics, like, who walk in, like, five minutes into a movie, ten minutes into a movie, you're already lost in this film. You're not playing catch-up. You're done. And if you walk away and you see, I have, it's documented here, I have a ritual. You've been to the film with me. You know what the ritual is, right? Irish coffee. Yeah, that, and five minutes before the film starts... I look at my watch, five minutes, I run to the bathroom. Because, Last second bio break. Yeah, I have to, because I know in that first viewing, I'm not getting up. I will not let myself get up. I just don't, I feel like I'm taken out of the moment and something's been fractured. And like, I got to spend the rest of my time trying to rebuild that fracture. I feel that. I can't do it. I mean, I've done, I mean, three and a half hours. I don't care. Lord of the Rings, whatever. I do it. And I knew I was not going to be getting up for this movie, but this is one of the movies that you can't. You're not going to say, oh, you didn't miss anything. Because you don't really know. It's like, yeah, you might have missed something, but I don't know if that's important or not. Let's imagine uh, you're watching the movie and whoever you're with gets up 
to go to the bathroom and says, uh, what did I miss? <laughs> what do you say to them when they come back? Yeah, because we already put the spoiler bomb off. Or so right now you got Jamie Lee Curtis who with a phenomenal performance. She's an IRS agent, but she's also like this giant thug who fights you. But then she's also a lesbian lover with hot dog fingers. You got to do it like you'd be whispering because this is you're in a movie theater, obviously. You know oh, yeah. Out. It's just like, okay. Remember how she was just an IRS agent? Well, she's actually the lesbian lover. Why do they have hot dog fingers? This is a world where people all have hot dog fingers. <laughs> it's like, why are they dancing, w- wiggling around their hot dog? And then the hot dog fingers had, why is there mustard coming out of the hot dog fingers? <laughs> was there a mustard part? I don't remember that part. You ever remember when they were doing the Bollywood and she was watching the Oh, Bollywood, right. I remember that. And now. then they started squirting the ketchup and mustard outside. See, if this would already be too long of a conversation, they would have raised an order card in Alamo for that disruptive neighbor, and we would have gotten a warning. But Michelle Yao, I mean, we, I mean, we've gotten a lot of her this year. We got Shang Chi, and then we saw her Magnificent Warriors, and now we got her in this. I love seeing, and I go to Alamo for specific films because I know the pre roll is going to show a lot of the older, cooler stuff. And thanks to you, I was lucky enough to see one of the pre-roll stuff that was in there. I was like, yeah, that's the movie. It's called Magnificent Warriors. I just saw that. Oh, it was in the pre-roll? I missed the pre-roll. It was in the pre-roll, yeah. Awesome. So it was very cool, of course, because, you know, she's... You know, she talked about her whole... All the stuff with, like, Jackie Chan. But let, let's go back to a second f- to... Uh, he, he's, I guess he would be... Co- they were, The Alpha... Alpha Universe is where they learned to c- make contact with other people in other universes. Yeah, that's right. So that's uh, so they were calling him Alpha uh, Alpha Wayland. That's the key Hu- Hui Quan character. Short round. I, again, he and this apparently this was the first movie that he's did like in a long time. Did I already say also he's a shoot martial artist? Apparently, <laughs> I no, you did not say that. But a man, I would have. I would not have known that until I watched this. And then you're like, wow, this is really like legitimate. So, all right, I'm going to pull up his stuff right here. I did not know. So he obviously, did you know his very first film was Indiana Jones? Well, his first U.S. film. That was his first. No, I had no idea. Sorry. You got 84. You got Temple of Doom. Then he was in Goonies. Then he was in a Taiwanese movie, Takes the Thief, Passenger, Japanese movie. He was in Encino Man. In 92. I remember that. Yeah. And then... He's Brendan Fraser's buddy. Yes. He loved him. He hugged him. Exactly. And then another... And then two Hong Kong movies. So he... And then he... I guess this was kind of his comeback. He has a Finding Ohana and everything all at once is like his comeback into the U.S. market. Which... And he did a phenomenal job. His martial arts... You can tell... This was the uh, the school of Jackie Chan, right? Because she, Michelle Yao, right? She got her break because of Jackie Chan, of like the ability of just like, I want to learn to do what you do and do her. And I think, I feel like she does her own stunt. And it was clear that he was doing his own martial arts as well. Yeah. He was, he and was it was definitely, great. It wasn't like all choppy and edited with a stunt double. Oh, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. I loved the gimmick where you had to do something bizarre to actually initiate the contact between you and a version of you in another multiverse because the universe is predictive and it tries to figure out what you're doing. So you had to, like, I always do this. I don't know if you've ever done this. Like, what if you're driving? What if all of a sudden I had this urge to make a left and pull into somebody's driveway and then run in the house? Like, would the universe be able to render a backstory fast enough or would I catch it? This is the stuff that goes through my head. But I didn't get it the first time because all of a sudden before his fight, he's like, he takes the chapstick and he goes all the way up with the chapstick and then he eats the chapstick. You have to do something completely unexpected and out of nowhere to create something that the universe can't predict and then it builds that tunnel between you and another version of you. But what's funny is you know you've thought about eating the chapstick before. Oh, like a, just rolling it out, just eating it like that. And some of us may have done it. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't taste like it smells. Spoiler alert. Do we need a spoiler alert for that? <laughs> it tastes way different than it smells. Yeah, it's just like, oh, you think this... it's going to be like a starburst. Yeah. This I mean, is I'm not... just saying, theoretically. <laughs> 
yeah, I don't know who's done that, but yeah, it doesn't taste like Starburst. But I just love that because I really want to do that. And here's the thing. And people talked about it like, what's your, uh, I've had multiple careers, right? We both have multiple careers. I mean, jumping from, you know, pro wrestling and it's just like, let's do, let's get in film and let's get into IT. Like, what are you going to do the next? And I decided I don't even want to tell myself what I'm going to do next. I want it to be completely unpredictable so i can really get like a true experience because if you start to doing it then the the universe has no choice but to build that path for you and then you i have feel to like do there's it. something to that right there's it something to, to that because i can't really i don't want to shoot on like i want to kind of do a real shoot but it's like i feel like uh uh you know as far as uh for me and the way like employment goes i've just been like real picky with jobs and i'm just kind of like i don't really want that nah now nah, i'll just now nah, i'm good now nah, now nah. and it's like the universe said well how about this job then you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. I, now will you go to work? Yeah, you lived it. I think I might. <laughs> you lived it, right? Because I think a lot of people settle. A lot. Of, uh, shout out to Terry Cruz. You know, telling Randy, and I heard it, and I was in the phone. He's like, "Nothing kills a great dream like a good job." 